Most Dangerous Game is an action series on the new platform Quibi that centers on a down-on-his-luck guy diagnosed with terminal illness who gets an offer that could help take care of his family if he manages to survive being hunted for 24 hours. The series stars Liam Hensworth and Oscar winner Christoph Waltz as the man behind the offer, Miles Sellers, and Mr. Waltz joins us today. I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and Christoph, the first question I want to ask is, uh, do you think this story will continue? It could. Very easily could. I, I, I hope it will. Um, no clue whether whether they have plans or not, and it's up to them, of course, and I don't know the numbers because that's not what I do, and they do <laughs> because that's what they do. And anyway, you know that, that uh, the continuation of a uh, such an elaborate endeavor is is uh, is a big thing. It's a big deal. So a lot of a lot of um, things need to be considered, and then they will. I'm sure. Whether or not that results in um, a continuation of of that story, um, I don't know. I hope it will. So, uh, bit of a uh, interesting question here. How long do you think you would be able to survive in that kind of challenge? How long do you think you would make it in that? Because I am very upfront in just saying, like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't last thirty minutes. I would be very reserved on that. So I'm curious how you think you would do in that type of challenge. Well, you see, considering that that all these hunters seem to be pretty adept at what they're doing, I um, I'd, I'd find thirty minutes pretty courageous um, and ambitious. And I, if I don't find a proper place to hide, um, seven and a half minutes, maybe. I don't know, if at all. Um, uh, you know, running, you can only do so much running. Uh, thankfully, thankfully, I don't have to really uh, think about that too much. So, uh, getting back to the project, to the, to the actual project, Most Dangerous Game, uh, what about the project or the character did you find compelling in terms of deciding to uh, take this job? Look, um, I go. I always go for story. I, I, I'm I'm not one of those, which is a perfectly perfectly legitimate approach. But I'm not um, looking at the part I'm asked to play. I'm looking at the whole thing because um, you want to make sense within the context. And if it makes sense, then I'm in, then I'm interested. And if the part is good, then I'm even more interested. And if the people that I would potentially work with are um, interesting um, and um, uh, um, even you know, sometimes it happens that that uh, you get offered something that you always aspire to be working with, and um, you know, it's it's like a like a whole thing. But the 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 point of departure for me is always the story. So what's really interesting about uh, uh, this is that uh, you know years before you uh, were uh, a known entity here uh, in the States, you actually uh, 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 made a lot of, uh, had uh, a lot of your career in television um, uh, over, over in Europe. And I'm curious, was it nice to return to making content for television or was the shooting very similar to how a film would have been shot? Very, very similar to how a feature film would be shot. And that's that. That was one of the great attractions of that. Um, that's the you know the the way the the Quibi people um, went about this is from the from the very beginning. Um, that this is uh, this is not a scaled down version of anything, if anything at all. On the contrary, it's a new format, and that that needs to be to be fathomed and used and put to to its its um, best and proper purpose. 
Um, and, and you don't do that by saying, you know what, it's, it's just a scaled down version of television and it's short and we take shortcuts. Ha, no. Look, this, this is a brainchild of Jeffrey Katzenberg and it would have been the first shortcut that this guy would have taken. So, so this could actually, if, if you edit um, the, the, the 16 or 15 or whatever it is episodes together, it could hold up very easily as a feature, I, I, I think. Yet, the way it's constructed, the way it's strung together, it's like, you know, each individual pearl on a gold chain, and then you put it around the beautiful lady, and there it is in all its splendor. It's, it's a thing, a unique thing um, on its own. And with, with um, you know, Phil Abrams is, is a top-notch director, and um, the production was a top-notch production. And um, everybody on it was an accomplished um, professional. This is exactly how you should work. And um, I, I wish I had done a lot of features that I did in my career uh, on that level. You know, it would look considerably different um, in my, my resume, I think. Anyway. <laughs> So, um, well, speaking of uh, your resume, uh, I think you've had one of the most uh, interesting uh, uh, decades that anyone that any actor has had um, for the past ten years. Um, it, it actually, just uh, a couple months ago was just uh, the tenth anniversary of uh, your your first Oscar win, and I'm curious, what was that first award season run like for you? Because it must have been completely surreal everything that happened in uh, 2009, 2010 for you. You said it, you said the perfect word, it was surreal. Um, it, you know, unfortunately, Michel Piccoli just passed away um, last week. And I saw, because I, I admired him uh, to, a, to a, you know, very, very great degree. And um, I think he was one of the few real actors on screen, on stage, whatever. Um, and um, he said, because he too came to movie fame relatively late in his career. And he was asked that exact question. And, um, and I just, I think day before yesterday, I saw this documentary on him. That's why it's so present in my mind. And he said, yeah, you know, it, I compare that to the Eiffel Tower. If you take an elevator up to the, I don't know, top and you get out and you have this splendid view and it's overwhelming and it's all, um, um, you can't believe it, Paris from, from above and, and you're um, completely thrown and overwhelmed by it. But then you can take the stairs and you get adjusted. And by the time you get to the top, you've acquainted yourself with the view and the individual um, 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 perspectives and sights. And when you get there, you recognize everything. You're just there. And um, I, I connected to that uh, very, very easily. I, I really identified with that image of having climbed the Eiffel Tower to the top and gradually gotten used to the surreality of, of, of what it could be. That being said, as the saying goes, nevertheless, and um, despite everything it was still it was still freakishly surreal and um I, i'm curious was there a moment uh maybe a specific moment or a, 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 a point in time when this was going on when you realized that your career was about to go to a completely different level yeah, I, I remember. I remember a moment in Cannes that was before the whole American thing started. Um, 
in Cannes when we were all assembling to, you know, in the motorcade, move to the Palais du Festival for the screening. And one of the producers, Erica Steinberg, said to me, you know, when you leave this room, your life will never be the same. And um, that, that, my tendency is, in, in, in instances like that, my tendency always is to dismiss it and laugh it off or make a snide remark. And somehow I was a little humbler that time. And she was right. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, um, you know, in the past uh, several years, you've gotten to work with uh, you know, amazing uh, directors, you know, uh, from Quentin Tarantino, Tim Burton, Sam Mendes, and, uh, Alex and even Alexander Payne. Uh, I'm curious, uh, who are three directors that you have not worked with that you would just drop everything uh, to do a project with? Yeah, well, most of those are dead already, unfortunately. But um, um, of the living ones, you know, I've, I've gotten to a point where I have to watch a little bit, not to look backwards so much. And, um, you know, that, that I need to keep my two cents together a little bit, two cents worth, whatever, uh, to, to, together a little bit to, yeah, let, let in a, a more unconventional choices uh, or make a few more, um, um, you know, ventures into unknown territory. There's so many, so many really interesting directors right now. Um, and a lot of them, a lot of them are completely unknown because they haven't gotten the chance for their breakthrough yet. Yeah, we see, you know, you know we see the big guys um, do great things. And um, there, there's, there's one of the, one of the very well known ones that I admire, and I would certainly immediately fly to work with him, um, Alfonso Cuaron. And um, Giorgi, um, um, uh, but I always hesitate to say his name because, because I, I, I'm not sure whether I pronounce it uh, correctly. But, but in, in any case, um, um, I wonder whether, whether there is this guy lurking, their guy, th that lady lurking in, in the wings. Um, ready to jump out and and do do the the next incredible thing um to always fall back on the on the known big guys i i i, I need to educate myself a little more you know in in asia there there are young unknown um um directors in korea in Japan, in China, um, this, these are all territories that, that I think I need to, I need to venture into rather than, rather than hoping for, for a movie with Inyaritu, with whom I certainly would, would work with, with the immediately, or, or, um, you know, I recently saw a Jacques Audiard movie, which I thought was fantastic and I would, love to work with him. Or yet, last night I saw a Michael Haneke movie, um, which I wasn't that crazy about, but I certainly would want to work with him, but I, I'm not sure that he would want to uh, work with me. But um, anyway, so so there you go. That's my answer, which is a little bit of a, of a deflection and dodging, um, but, but um, this is how I feel lately. Well, it's completely understandable, and I love, and that's great that you want to, that you're excited for new talent that's out there. Um, well, and uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Christoph, for joining us. Uh, we wish you all the best uh, for this year's Emmy season, and to all our viewers, 
Don't, uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel to see our latest content, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks so much, Christoph. Thank you. Be well. Take care of yourself. Thank you.